Hello and welcome back to On The Workbench. Today we're taking a look at my Porter Cable PCAP400 dust collector. This has been actually out of production for quite a while and I almost rarely show this on camera. Uh, this is a clone of the similar Delta uh, 400 AP or is it 400 or AP400 uh, one horsepower dust collector. Uh, these were made in about 2010, 2011 with some of them still lingering around maybe into early 2012, but I've not seen, it, uh, these are on anywhere for sale since maybe early 2012, so we're looking at about a little over six years ago. It's been a great unit for me. I have got no complaints about it. Works great with my table saw. One of the upgrades I was wanting to do, the, uh, to do for this for a while was to add the, a cartridge filter rather than the bag filter that you see up at the top up there. And so I finally got a cartridge filter it took me about five and a half years worth of searching to get one, and I actually got one new in the box from Delta. So you're going, maybe you're scratching your head about why does it say Delta? Well, Porter Cable used to be owned by Delta, and it was Delta Porter Cable as a combined company. And these dust collectors, I believe, were uh, originally uh, came out of the joint, I don't know if we call it a joint venture, but were made shortly after the dissolution of Delta Porter Cable when Stanley Black & Decker bought the brand. And so some of these older units like this, you'd have to look for Delta parts. And so this box, this, this was, I found this on Amazon and, and it was available on Amazon Prime. I make zero guarantees that you can ever find this again on Amazon Prime or anywhere else. But I'm gonna open the box here on camera and I'll show you what you get with this cartridge and we'll add this on and we'll do a couple little comparisons uh, before and after to see what it does for the airflow on my dust collector. So after we get out of the box, we've got our filter. It's nicely packaged in styrofoam here. We'll pull the styrofoam apart. And then now inside the filter here, we've got a set of instructions on our so-called operator's manual. I see here the date of printing here is 2004. If that gives you some idea on the age on this. Reach down here and we've got some double-sided tape. If we fil flip the filter back around, we've got the filter here. Now it looks like we're missing the handle. There should be a little handle on this. Let me take a look around the packaging. So a little bit of looking, it appears that this handle did not come with it. It's supposed to. I don't know that I can really return this. I definitely want the filter. I'll find a way to make it work and maybe get in touch with customer service, see if I can get my handle, my source of the handle, not basically as a flapper inside to knock the dust down. And it's supposed to come with a band clamp here or belt clamp part D, but I've already got one of those on the dust collector, so I should be fine. And then this bag here contains some of the foam, which is part C here on this diagram. So I think I should be good. So the handle would theoretically connect here. I can definitely feel the grease there for where that would be. See, there's a little bit of lube right there on top where it's a little shiny. If I flip this upside down and you look and you see there's a vein in there. And so this vein here turns is supposed to turn like that, and that knocks the dust out of the filter plates. So now before we mount it, I want to take a look at the airflow that I'm getting through my dust collector right now with that filter bag and dust in the bottom plastic bag. This is a pretty practical test, I think, in terms of how this will perform in so-called real-world use. And then I've got an anemometer and I'm also going to set up a noise meter to see if there's any comparison or reduction in noise and airflow with, uh, in the before and the after. So first, for some baseline information, I'm going to set my noise meter four feet from the motor or about 122 
centimeters and the baseline reading while I'm talking is about 69, 70, 62 when quiet. And this is before I turn it on. And so now I'm going to turn on the dust collector and we're going to see what our volume jumps to. If you could see those numbers on the anemometer, we got up to about 3,800 feet per minute. And I guess you can't actually see the number there. But we got up to about 3,800 feet per minute in the before. Now it's time to switch out the filter and see how this affects our airflow. So then to switch this out, this actually has a band clamp on it. And we're going to have to find our band clamp buckle. For me, it's right here and I'm just gonna release that. Now I'm gonna have to pull this uh, through the bag just like a belt because I'm gonna have to reuse this on the cartridge filter. Theoretically, it should have came with one, but mine didn't. We're gonna unloop this from this little top bag hook at the top. My bag hook has been kind of looking a little sad. And we can see inside here, we've got some dust, a pretty good sized pile of dust right there in that little cavity of the port there. There's the suction side right there. This is definitely collecting dust over there, and that's actually some pretty fine dust. Probably don't want to breathe that, and there is our bottom bag full of dust. I'm going to try to keep this as, as same, same as possible. Obviously, there's a warning label there of to not stick your fingers towards the impeller because you could lose your finger. So with that in mind, we're going to be safe and not do that. There we go, the filter just basically press fits on. Now I'm gonna take that rubber band clamp and go right around the outside edge. I'm not sure I'm gonna need any of the other uh, doohickeys for connecting it. I just need to put that filter around the solid to seal up that rubber around the outside. One of the things I can tell is that the band clamp I took off the regular bag seems just a little small to actually make this work. I can't actually buckle the latch. There's enough, there's a fair bit of tension just right now holding that closed. First obvious comment that I see is that it's definitely shorter. You see the hook right up here at the top from where that bag used to go. And this is cut off about 12 inches or so off the height of this unit. So it helps reduce a little bit the profileness or the height of this. Because I've thought about wall mounting this and doing some der uh, derivation of what DIY Tyler did with some of his setups. So I'm put a link below to some of his dust collector filters or setups that have inspired me. Um, to think about my dust collection. Awesome creator, awesome channel, go check them out. And so now with this cartridge filter in place, let's see what it does for our dust collector. All right, time to check the volume with the cartridge filter. So based on the, ana the anemometer data, I was getting about 4,000 on this for my uh, feet per minute, a gain of about 200 feet per minute uh, with the clean cartridge filter compared to the used uh, bag filter. This has a finer uh, filtration down to, I believe it's two microns. Yes, the box says two microns. And the other bag, I forget what it was. I'll see if I can put the number on the screen when I edit this video. And you should see a number somewhere here for what the rating of the bag was. And I hope you found this video useful and interesting about the dust collection filter for this border cable PC 400 AP unit. If you found this video useful and interesting, give it a thumbs up. Check back for more great tool content on this channel. Have a great day. Bye.